With no end in sight to the cost of living crisis, there's a push for Australia to change the way it thinks about poverty, including allowing the government to set and measure an official poverty line. Social services say Australia should follow in New Zealand's footsteps by recognising the effects of poverty on children and passing legislation to measure and eventually work towards alleviating the problem. The chief economist at the Australia Institute has called for government reform. Yeah, what we're seeing is we've got, uh, we know that there are over around 3 million people who are living in poverty. It's a, it's a, a vast number of people, but the, really the crucial issue at the moment is we don't actually have an official measure of poverty. So how many we're, we're saying are actually in poverty mm. is, is rather up to debate. And that's kind of the, the real issue that we're dealing with because you can't fix what you don't know. And, uh, and if you're not even measuring it, it's very easy for governments to avoid even having to deal with the issue. Mm, OK, so how do you then set, you know, a, a poverty line? How do you defy it? I mean, I know that over the years this has been, uh, you know, of interest to governments, whoever might be in power. The Henderson poverty line was developed back in the 70s. So is that just a rough guide now? And where do we go from that? Yeah, the Henderson poverty line devised in the 70s was devised around, you know, kind of what's a basic wage uh, for a family of four, and it's increased in line with inflation. But the more comparable measure of inflation that all nations in the OECD use is one that is actually linked to median income, something along the lines of 50% of median income, so half of median incomes, because that allows us to have a real measure of relative poverty that ensures that we're actually measuring what it is like to exist in Australia at a point where you're losing touch with, in effect, middle Australia. And that's something that also allows us to compare how we're going with the rest of mm. the OECD with other rich nations. We know we do GDP per capita where we're coming about eighth in the OECD, but when we use this measure of 50% of median income, we're down around 24th, 25th in the OECD. So that's something that we think should be brought into place. OK, so what would be the key elements of a poverty line that you would like to see introduced? Well, certainly we, we think that it should be something that is comparable with uh, the rest of the OECD, something that comes out regularly. We would suspect uh, every three months, so quarterly, much like the GDP and, and inflation figures that come out. Also, we would like to see a measure specifically of childhood poverty. We know Australia actually ranks even lower on childhood poverty scales than we do on overall poverty. So it's about measuring those two key things that really would then force the government to actually have to be held to account on these measures every quarter, just as they are with the inflation, as we saw this week, or unemployment, or the GDP mm. figures that come out. Mm. Uh, we did mention the New Zealand experience earlier in the interview. I believe that they introduced laws in 2018. What are they doing there? Is it working? Would you like to borrow some of those ideas? Yeah, well, actually, you know, committing to reducing childhood poverty is something that I think should be done. It is something that, you know, we need to raise our... our our, our eyes a bit and, you know, raise our sights and, and actually aim for things. And if you're, you know, we're, one, we're not measuring and we're not even really committing to reducing or, or ending childhood poverty. This is something that can be done. It's actually something that we know is, in a sense, what needs to be done. We need to provide more support to people in, in poverty. So what we're after is, one, government measuring it, government committing to actually eradicating childhood poverty and also being acknowledging that actually during the COVID years when governments uh, massively increased subsidies to things like JobSeeker, that it actually had a huge impact on reducing poverty. This is not something that is beyond mm. the ability of governments. It's kind of just beyond their choices at, their mo at the moment. Yeah, well, I want to ask you about the appetite for, for that. Is there political will and appetite for it and is there voter support? Well, certainly our report, we uh, did polling and we see, you know, four out of five Australians are in favour of not only measuring poverty, but also governments committing to eradicating childhood poverty. It is something that has overwhelming support. Governments, I think, have been for too long been able to get away with the line that, oh, we'd like to do something, but we can't afford it. Well, you know, raising the, the rate of job seeker to around 90% of the age pension, which is something the government's own inequality commission has recommended, that would cost somewhere just under $5 billion, which, yes, is a lot, 
But right now, the government is choosing to keep in place the capital gains discount, which costs around $20 billion a year, $16 billion of which goes to the richest 10%. So it's not about not being able to afford it. It's about what the government is choosing to say they can afford. Greg Jericho, many thanks for your time. Not a problem, great to chat. Thanks for watching. We love that we can make these videos free to watch, but they're not free to make. It's thanks to our generous supporters that we can keep making research and content that changes minds. So if you like what we do, please consider giving to the Australia Institute so we can keep doing it. Visit our website, australiainstitute.org.au and click the donate button to see how your support can help fund high quality research that matters.